Gentlemen, welcome to the final lesson on trigonometry, where we look at the application of trig in 2D and 3D planes of reference. That'll make sense um, as we go along here. What you should have today with you is a pen, pencil, notepad, calculator, your formula sheet now, where you're going to take special notice, I think, today specifically on the grade 11 formulas of sine rule, cos rule, and area rule, and then manipulating the compound and double angles, which you've been working on for the past week. So first of all, let's just go through a bit of a revision of non-right angle trig. As you would remember, not all triangles are right angle triangles, and so our trigonometry originally needed us to reference against a 90 degree triangle so that we could find a hypotenuse. When we have triangles that don't have hypotenuse, we have to use one of these three rules, the area rule, the sine rule, and the cosine rule. Let's just have a look at what we've got here, and I'm going to remind us again a couple of times. So first of all, Let's just take the area rule, and we do it in green. The area rule of any triangle essentially is looking for a corner. We would need a, let's just look at the first one, B, C, and sine A. So B and C and sine A means we're looking for a corner. And that's true for all of the area rules. What we're looking for area rule is do we have information that effectively is in that structure? two sides and an included angle. If this was grade nine, we would use it as side angle side in terms of congruency. So we want an included angle. For the sine rule, let's look at its data. It is talking about opposites. So sine rule is saying, if I do sine rule in red, it's saying, if I knew these, could I work with those? So sine rule is looking at a concept of information across the triangle, sides and angles in relation to each other. The last one, the cosine rule, we just kind of highlight that. Cosine rule is looking at a modification of Pythagoras. And the first three components, I think you can see a bit of a Pythag there, but because we don't have a right angle triangle, we've overcounted, so we have to deduct a component. So cosine rule is a modification of Pythagoras, and again, it needs all three sides and an angle. It is again, if we look at it, the included angle. Let's do this one down here with this uh, included angle for C. It needs A and B with cosine C. So it needs A and B with the cosine of C. Again, it needs this shape. So the cosine rule also needs what appears to be side angle side, definitely an included angle. And usually then it lets us work out the third side of the triangle. So you've practiced a bit of these in grade 11. We need a lot more practice as we manipulate 2D and 3D triangles. Okay, good. So let's just ask ourselves, which rule are we going to use when? First thing we want to remember is that if they ask for the word area, it's probably the area rule. But more importantly, it's when we don't have a perpendicular height. And for area rule, what we need to have is a piece of information, an angle, another piece of information. That'll help us then find the area of a triangle. For the sine rule, for the sine rule, no right angle is given, two sides and an angle are given, and not an included angle. So it's not an included angle, the side. So, for example, that and that could be given, and we'd be asked to find out that. So we could look in a cross format. So the sign rule is all about looking for information across the triangle. In the cosine rule, what we have, no right angle given, two sides, and again, an included angle. And sometimes three sides are given. So again, it could be a case of we know that, we know that, we know that. We'd be asked to find that. So again, we've got this structure, side, angle, side. And we'd been asked to find a third side. We could work backwards and find the unknown angle also, um, so just keep your wits about you on those ones. Again, I think it's vitally important for me to make a note here, again, that your calculator has to be in degree mode. So if you haven't clicked on the video that I posted last time to figure out how to work to degree mode, make sure your calculator is on degree mode to do this. Okay, our first worked example today, given a triangle where A is 14, angle B is 19 degrees, side C is 17, there were three parts to this. Work out the length of B, find the angle C, and determine the area of ABC. Pause this video and give those three a try yourself. 
Okay, good. So you've had a chance to try the first one. Let's have a look at what we've been given. We've been given a side, a side, and an included angle, which means we've been given information that follows this pattern. That means we can do one of two things. We can either find area, which they have asked us to do, or we can use the cosine rule. If we use the cosine rule, we will be allowed to find out that extra side, which is exactly where B is standing. So let's use this information to figure out what B is. First thing we're going to say is that B squared equals A squared plus C squared minus 2 times A times C times the included angle in the corner. So let's just fill this all out. We've got 14 squared plus 17 squared minus 2 times 14 times 17 times cos of 19. And so the square number that we get is 34.93 pieces. And when we need to net out, B is 5,9, in this case, of centimeters. Did you get that? Use this number now to try and work out the angle C. All right, good. So you've had a chance to try out C. Let's see what we've got now. We want this. We do have that, and we've just worked out that. So we've got a cross structure, which means we can use the sine rule. We've got information that matches this pattern. So if it matches this pattern, we can use the sine rule. Sine rule says if we want that sine of C, sine of C over its side must be equal to sine of B over its side. And if we need to this up, we've got sine of C equals C times sine of B all over lowercase b. And that's going to do something for us. It's going to give us 0 0.938 point dot dot. There is a bit of a question now we have to ask ourselves is what does C look like? Is it an acute angle, a right angle, or an obtuse angle? And we can see here based on the drawing, it's definitely not an acute angle or a right angle. So it must be an obtuse angle. So we have to be very careful. When you go shift sign of C now, Shift sine of C on your calculator is going to spit out 69.7 degrees. But that cannot be the case because that is an acute angle. We have to therefore take out the ambiguous case, which says to us that C in the ambiguous case is actually the 180 minus the 69.7 degrees so that we get 110.3 degrees. That then is the answer to the question for how big is angle C. It is the obtuse angle. So be very careful when you're doing these that your answer matches reality. The last part now that I want you to try with all this information I've given you is what is the area of ABC? Pause the video and try. Good, so you've had a chance to try. I think let's use the original information we've been given. Oops, a daisy, I want to use the highlighter, not the pen. Um, we've been given a side, an angle, and a side. And so since we've got a side, angle, and side, what we have is enough information, as we said before, to work out the area. The area of our triangle, if we set this up, this is for part three, the area of our triangle ABC will be equal to half of the one side, which is A, times the other side, which is C, times sine of the angle, in this case, which is B. So we would want half of 14 times 17 times sine of 19, which gives us 38.7 centimeters squared. How did you do? The next example I'd like you to try is to try show that BC squared equals 2x squared multiplied into 1 plus sine theta. Pause this video and try it yourself. Okay, good. You've had a chance. The first thing you would do for any of these questions in a test or exam is fill out in the drawing what you do know. What do we recognize as being AOD? That's a diameter. That means that angle B must be 90 degrees. Why would it be 90 degrees? Now that you know that it's 90 degrees, what can we say about this extra angle that we have over here of the 90? Well, what we do know is that the angle sum of triangle is 180. So the angle that we've created here must be 90 minus theta. If that's true, the balancing angle that we must have on the other side, which is what we're going to call angle D, 
these two angles, the red and green, must make 180, so therefore this must be 90 plus theta. I think we filled out everything we do know now. I suppose also what we can see, but they haven't really asked for it just yet, is since x and x are two sides of a triangle, this angle and this angle are the same size. Let's see what we're going to use. Okay, for any proof, let's start with the triangle that we've got. So we're going to focus our attention into, oopsie, um, attention will be in triangle BCD. In triangle BCD, what do we notice? We've got a non-right angle triangle, and we've got two x's and an included angle. So therefore, we've got a cos rule. That means that BC squared must equal BD squared plus DC squared minus 2 times BD DC times cos of the angle that's at D. Let's replace everything with what we know. BD squared is x squared. DC squared is x squared. We've got 2 times x times x, which is 2x squared. And what we left with then also is cos of 90 plus theta. Now you should have recognized this. Cos of 90 plus theta is something. So we can tidy this up a little bit. Let's add these first two x's. So we've got 2x squared. Happy days. Here's another 2x squared. But cos of 90 plus is a co-function. We're placing cos into the sine quadrant. So automatically it must become negative. Because we're changing off the vertical, it's got to change its name. And we're going to keep the variable. So what does that mean? What can we do here? We're going to say the following that the negative inside the bracket is going to join the negative outside the bracket and make a positive. So we have 2x squared added to 2x squared times sine theta. And what we can then do is factorize out to 2x squared. 2x squared, 1 plus sine theta, which is what they wanted you to prove. All right, not too bad. Up to this point, you would really have not had anything new. In grade 12, what we do is go to problems in three dimensions. So trig formula are useful for solving problems in two dimensions. However, the real world and most, well, not most, all objects are three-dimensional based. So it's important that we extend the applications of the area sine and cosine formulas to three-dimensional spaces. Drawing a 3D diagram is a crucial step in finding a solution and interpreting these from given information and sketching them are skills that you should practice Today I'm not going to ask you to draw any, I'm going to give you the drawings, but you really should be able to take a description and create a 3D diagram, which is not as easy as it sounds. So we need to find some questions where you will be doing that. All right, our first worked example, I'm going to speak through it and give you a chance to try. We have T is the top of a pole and its base F is at the same horizontal plane as the points A and B. The angle of elevation measured from B to T is 25, AB is 120, FAB is 40, and FBA is 30, use the given information to calculate H, the height of the pole. I think what's important here are a couple of things, and I'm going to highlight them here in red. Anytime they use this, oh, no, I don't want red, I want a red highlighter. Anytime they use the concept of a pole, they're going to say that it's perpendicular to the ground. That gives you a right angle triangle. 99 times out of 100, these situations include a right angle triangle and a non-right angle triangle. For the right angle triangle, you're going to use all the normal laws that you had before. So for the right angle triangle, just make some notes before you try this yourself. For the right angle triangle, you're going to use Sokotoa. Good old Sokotoa. For the non-right angle triangle, what you're going to do is use the sine, the cosine, or the area rules. So you're going to be using the rules we created last year. And it's often a combination of these two triangles that will be able to solve this question for you. So the one you're going to try now, use the information to calculate H, the height of the pole. So pause this video and try to figure out H. Okay, so the first thing I would suggest that you do is break up the 3D drawing into 2D versions of it. So I've split the 3D drawing into a right angle triangle, FTB, and a non-right angle triangle, FBA. And the information in white on these triangles is what's shown on the drawing. Can we fill out even more information? I would suggest that you try to fill this as much as you can. This is trigonometry, so if you do use something like angle sum of triangle, please use a reason. I'm not going to give reasons in this practice one, but in tests and exams, please give reasons. Do we know how big 
in the right hand side triangle, the non right angle one, do we know how big angle F is? Well, 30 plus 40 is 70, and the angle sum of triangle is 180, so we know that this is 110. Automatically, the non right angle triangle has a lot more information than the non than the right angle triangle. What we can see here, I think, is that this edge, which I'm going to kind of do a squiggle in red, is actually connected to this triangle's edge, squiggle in red. So if I could work out the side on this one, it's actually going to give information onto this triangle, which can complete what I'm aiming for. I'm aiming for H. Let's put this down in a kind of a logical structure. Let's start in the non-right angle triangle. How would I work out what FB is? Well, FB is going to be part of a sine rule. So we could take it as the following. FB over sine A must be equal to AB over sine F. So FB is going to be AB times sine A all over sine F. Let's replace these with their numbers. So AB is 120 multiplied by sine of 40 divided by sine of 110 gives us that FB is 82.084 dot dot dot. Keep these numbers in the memory of your calculator. It's much more useful. So we've got information we can transfer now. Good. So the answer we had in the non-right angle triangle connects to the right angle triangle and we're looking for H. The only piece of information for angles we know is the 25. So what we can do is if we stand at 25, we've got an opposite and an adjacent. That means the tan of 25 equals opposite over adjacent. Let's multiply this out. So 82.084, keeping all the decimals, multiplied by tan of 25 will give us our height. And the height in this case is going to be equal to 38.246. And let's just round this off to 38 meters as our height. Did you get that? Okay, good. Worked example number four feels like one of those uh, Facebook quizzes where how many triangles do you see? Reality has the grayed out one is the base. Coming off of that base, we've got a triangle to the right, a triangle at the back, and a triangle slanted lying on top of it. So we've got one, two, three, four triangles here and in a 3D space. D is the top of a building, which means it's right angled. Um, it's got a height of H. The base of the building is at A, and triangle ABC lies on the ground, so they're all on the same horizontal plane. BC equals lowercase b, DBA is alpha, DBC is beta, DCB is theta. They want you to show that H is B times sine alpha times sine theta all over sine of beta plus theta. These are the worst ones to work with because it's all variable based and there's such a complicated drawing that I would suggest that when I say pause this video that you break apart these triangles first and then try to show that H is this expression. So pause the video, break it apart, and see what you can do. Okay, first thing I need you to try to see here is what have we broken this up into? We have a triangle called DCB, which is that back wall over there. It has a height H, which has a height H, it has a 90 and a 90. We have another triangle, DAB, which is D, oops, Daisy, DAB, which is this one. It has a given angle of alpha, an angle of alpha, and the 90 and the 90. So just already, out of these two triangles, the one on the right-hand side has more information. It has a height and an angle and a 90. I suspect then we're going to be using this one, but let's see what else we know. We were told that the triangle DCB, the one that's lying at an angle slanted here, DCB, has an angle of theta, an angle of beta, and an B as a side length. Now what I want you to pick up is, look at the question. There's a beta plus theta component. So something we're going to have to do is going to need beta plus theta. And they want you to use sine to use that thing. So keeping that in the back of your mind, we're going to manipulate this bottom triangle, probably using the sine rule. Let's figure out a couple of other things that we do know here. How big is this angle? Well, if we know that that total sum of triangle is 180 plus let me think about this. Unknown plus beta plus theta must equal 180. That means that the unknown angle here is 180 degrees minus the sum of the two bottom ones. Um, let's do this in order. Beta plus theta. 
So that angle is 180 minus beta plus theta. If we take the bottom triangle and I manipulate it and I speak about it as being, let's try to get information to go across into side B. So let's do this. Let's say that in this bottom triangle, I've got that BD over sine theta is equal to CB over sine of D. Hmm. Let's just neaten this up a little bit. That means that BD is equal to CB is lowercase b. Sine theta moves up. And in the denominator, I've got sine of D. But sine of D is the same as saying sine of 180 minus beta plus theta. Well, 180 minus for sine function just puts it into the sine quadrant. So I've got sine of beta plus theta in the denominator with the same numerator still. I now have an expression for BD, which I can transfer into another triangle. So I've got an expression for BD, which I can transfer into another triangle. Well, here's a BD. This edge is called BD. So actually, without too much hassle, I can now move into this top right triangle and say, well, what do I have? I've got an angle alpha, I've got an opposite, and I've got a hypotenuse. If I've got an opposite and a hypotenuse, that means that sine of alpha must equal opposite over hypotenuse, which is BD. Let me rewrite this just for a second. So we've got H is equal to BD multiplied by sine alpha, which means it's equal to, well, BD we already know at the bottom is B times sine theta all over sine of beta plus theta. And that's going to be multiplied by sine alpha. And so that really is what we wanted to prove. So these require you to have a really good sense of taking a 3D drawing, flattening it into two dimensions, and then looking where is there information I can work with. I would suggest that almost all the cases, you will first do sine causal area rule and then a normal soccer toa to finalize it. I really hope that you've enjoyed the trigonometry. All these videos are available on my YouTube channel for you to go watch again and again. Um, hit like and subscribe if you like the channel, as they say on these things. And I want to tell you that we're going to be fine for the tests coming up on the 9th of July. It'll be on everything we've just done in this work. I'm going to share a whole lot of past papers and examples with you also. So, yes, I hope that you've enjoyed these. And please get in touch with your teacher or me if you have any questions.